Hello, everyone, and good morning or good evening for some of you. Uh, peace of Christ, and today we are going to answer Abdul. Um, you know, from time to time, we uh, we face and we witness that some people they ask questions showing that they are just copy paste and they have no intelligence whatsoever. And you know, it's obvious that a human being suffer from the lack of intellect. This is why we see people they do things that does not make sense and stupid. Uh, as an example, today we heard that there was an idiot who took his gun and he, and he attacked a synagogue and he started shooting people, killing them left and right just because they are Jews. You know, obviously, this is a very clear sign of mental illness and stupidity. It's not only a sign of a criminal act, because all a criminal act start from mental issues. And when we say mental issue, it does not mean that God created you to be mental, but you choose to be one. Um, so always you will see and you will witness such a thing. Here in the front of us, we have a we have a person. You know, supposedly he is Abdul, but I'm not sure. Maybe he's an atheist. He said, the Arabian prophet, I made a comment saying the Bible says, poison, uh, poison sorry, cannot affect Christians, like Mark 16, 18 says, when they drink deadly poison. It will not hurt them at all. Answer me in the Bible. is It says a stupid like you should not explain uh, the Bible to us if Jesus is God of the Christians and he himself he was killed so how the word stupid to understand that it is nobody can kill us you see actually you are just taking what you uh, you saw my video I am the one who made the video I am the first one who made a response saying how in the world Christians will believe that this is what it's meant if the Lord himself the Lord of the Christians the God of the Christians himself was a crucified so don't be play smart I am the one who said that to you and you just answer yourself, you idiot. You just say to yourself the answer. Because if the, 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 the Lord of the Christian, the God of the Christians, he was a crucified. So how you stupid understood that this is about death by poison. The poison we have is, I, I was speaking a second about the mental issues. The poison we have is, is hate, is, 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 a, uh, is discrimination, is a slavery. As agreed, is uh, uh, this is all is a poison. All the teaching of Jesus is about you dying and going to hell, not about you living forever. And the Bible is full of verses. But because you choose to be a donkey, you are not made to be a donkey. But you choose to be a donkey. You decide not to see what he is saying. Because if you read a few verses after that, you will see what he meant. But you are a person who copy paste. You heard somebody saying something, and you idiot, you took it as it is, and then you listen to me. I am the one who said, "Well, if the Christian believed that nobody can kill us by poison, well, there's no Christian should be killed anyway, isn't it? All the apostles of Jesus they die and and they were killed. Who is the stupid here? It's you. The one who believe in this verse, all of them, they get killed." So it is you who have a mental issue, it's not us. We knew what's written there, and we knew if we drink poison, not only poison, if you drink anything, can affect you. Too much water can kill you, you will be drowned. Too much salt will kill you, you will have a blood pressure. Too much air will make you not able to breathe. And too much of anything will, will destroy you. Human being is very easy to break. A mosquito can kill you. A little virus can destroy you. So it is you who is a stupid who don't want to see what Jesus is saying. Now let us go and see what Jesus is saying. If we go to Matthew chapter 13, it says, And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speak thou unto them in parables? Jesus always he used metaphorical teaching always 
so they are asking why always you speak to them in such a way what is the purpose and the answer is in the front of you in order for people to understand what he mean he have to make it more simple but in order to understand what he is talking about, you have to read the whole thing he said, not just a statement copy paste from somebody he posted for you on a website, and you decide to say, okay, Jesus said, if you drink poison, here we go, I will give you poison, drink it. That is very naive of you to think that Jesus meant, really, if you drink poison, you will not die. You see, the, the Bible is a book full of metaphorical teaching. You know, I remember once a Muslim, he said to me, uh, you know, do you know that Jesus in the Bible says, drink my piss? I said, really? Where? He said, he said, the one who drink my water will never go thirsty. <laughs> so supposedly this is the piss of Jesus. You know, but this is the this is the mentality of someone decide to be a donkey. God did not create you to be a donkey, but you decide to be one. It's your business. I mean, you know, we cannot force you to be a, a, a mule or a horse or an elephant or even a human being, but you choose to be what you want to be. So if you choose a person to believe that Jesus was speaking about drinking piss, well, this is your problem. The funny a Muslim he's making. Speaking about drinking piss, when it's Muhammad who ordered him not to drink his piss, but to drink the piss of a camel. And by the way, I can show you a reference how Muslims did drink the piss of the Prophet. And he claimed that whoever drink his piss will never have her, you know, health problem. Uh, he is a Christian? No, he's not a Christian. Because a Christian, he was not going to uh, I say such a thing you see the um, let me show you the picture again I made a comment saying people say okay okay uh, okay uh, it says stupid like you uh, okay yeah yeah see I'm not mistaken him there's no Christian will accuse the Bible of saying stupid things as he said is no Christian he claim that this is a stupid thing right now if you see here he says it will not hurt them at all CP answer me in the Bible says stupid like you should not explain the Bible to us if Jesus the God of the Christians and himself was killed so how in the world you stupid understand that it is nobody can kill us read the bible it is a speak of that they can kill little body but would not harm for we will be resurrected hmm. obviously cp does not know what he is talking about yeah this is a fake christian he can't be christian if you uh, if you read if you watch the video I made about this topic, you will see I said it clearly that Jesus he said, whoever believe in me and die will live, whoever. So, the Bible speak about many things, and all of them is about that nobody can destroy you, for you belong to me, and this guy is no Christian. You know the first thing. To know about somebody he claimed to be a christian a christian he attack a christian for defending the bible he is no christian he is a person who have the devil inside him and either he is a muslim playing to be christian there is no christian will attack a christian for defending the bible i'm not i'm not saying anything negative i defend the bible and I explain it and the video is still there actually in my in my channel you can go and watch it and so you can laugh at this idiot when Jesus speak, when the Bible speak about many things around us, we have one of two ways to explain them. Either we take them in a metaphorical or we take them literally. Some of the Bible is metaphorical and some of the Bible is literally. Now, how we will know? 
what is metaphorical what is not metaphorical it's very simple if what it is literally taken and it is not something anyone of the disciple practice like did they start drinking poison after Jesus said that obviously nobody did that did anyone try right away he said okay when well, Jesus he said if you drink uh, poison you wanna die let us drink some <laughs> so obviously this is a metaphorical meaning same time in order to understand in order to understand statements in the Bible you have to read the rest of the Bible in Matthew 10 28 33 it says and do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body so this is not about poison this is about the poison of the life the poison around us you know you decide to become an atheist you decide to become abdul you decide to become a donkey like this guy who attack christians for no reason uh you decide what you want to decide this is poison you're poisoning yourself and you lost the spirit of christ the spirit of christ is somebody he answer based on the bible and he will not accuse a christian to be not a christians In the same time you cannot be Christian but yet you make lies and fabricate about somebody and say he said that I did not say or I you know like imagine I said this guy he said something that he did not say that is not a Christian behavior so be aware of false teachers and false people who try to spread their poison the poison will kill you is the hatred and obviously this guy he hate me doesn't matter who he is he have a he have a mental uh, issue of hate and hate is a problem in this earth you know there's many of the people who hate me for what I say and what I do and I understand that I mean the second you start saying things people don't like they would hate you I, I'm I'm sure there's many before they pray they pray for uh, the pure to sleep they pray for my death but I understand Jesus he said time will come and people will think by killing you they are doing favor to God you know so this guy he think he is doing favor to God by attacking me and you idiot let me read again for you to show you how, how funny this guy is it will not hurt them at all CP answer me in the Bible it says a stupid like you should not explain the Bible to us if Jesus the God of the Christians and himself was killed so how the world would you stupid understood that nobody can kill us read the Bible it is speaking of that they can kill little buddy but that would not harm for we we will be resurrected and we are protected by our Lord obviously CP does not know what he is talking about but he called me stupid the Bible says control your tongue but has a problem CP has a problem my friend I have no problem and look like you are insulting Jesus because Jesus he told the ones who they are hypocrite like you the sons of Viber so I'm sure if you were there you will school Jesus and you will say to him you cannot control your tongue I did not call you the son of Viber yet but it's coming and I'm sure when I say that you will accuse me of something bad because obviously you don't like Jesus too because for you obviously Jesus cannot control his tongue false people always will be exposed and the funny here like I'm looking at here what he's saying uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what to say. <laughs> Actually, sorry for him. And look what he have in his face anyway. Uh, so, you know, the Muslims, they ask us these questions about uh, uh, drinking poison. Uh, you know, the, the Muhammad, he said, if you eat seven ajwa, no poison will kill you. And Muhammad himself, he died by poison, as we know. Uh, if we go in the hadith, but before we go to the Quran, let us see, let us read some verses. You see, the the the, uh, the Muslims uh, uh, they quote for us more verses. Like example, they say, 
Well, Jesus said, I did not come to bring peace. I will say to the same, the same logic for the same idiot, like this guy, he might say to me now, the Christian prince can't understand the Bible. Because they might say, okay, Jesus said it clearly, I did not come to bring peace. But as you see, Jesus always spoke in parables about what peace means. What peace means that everybody will persecute you. It's not the opposite. It's not the Christians who will go after others. It is they will go after you. They say, Jesus, he said, I came with a broad sword. This sword will be in us. This is what we are talking about. People will kill you thinking they are doing favor to God. Otherwise, name for me the army of Jesus. Who was the head of the army of Jesus and which attack Jesus he did order? None. Who is the person you know Jesus he slaughtered? None. Which city, which town, which village Jesus he attacked? None. So why you say that Jesus said he brought sword and that mean he brought uh, army to kill people? Because if he said that and the way you understood it, that's mean Jesus must be killing many people. Now you need to name them for me and you need to tell me when Jesus, he took an army of his men. And by the way, you do not need an army to, to, be, a, to be a criminal. I mean, he have 12 people, they can attack people anywhere. I remember a few years ago, there was a guy, his name is Abdul Muhammad, and he is a Muslim convert. He used to serve in the USA Army, and they call him the sniper of New York. This guy, he terrified the whole city. Just one guy. It's not an army, a guy. So if you decide to be a criminal, you can be a criminal. Like today, uh, a guy, he ad attacked a synagogue of the Jews, and he starts shouting, saying that all Jews must die. Yeah, one criminal. We do not need to have an army to, to be a criminal anyway. And he killed a, a living people. So, be honest with yourself, Muslims. When you speak about Jesus, don't try to be foolish and don't listen to donkeys who have no idea what they are talking about. Jesus never killed. Jesus never attacked. Jesus never have an army. Jesus is the only one who said, love your enemy and pray for them. So how Jesus said, love your enemy and pray for them, and then he says, kill them, where he said that. So, if Jesus spoke about the sword, obviously this is have a metaphorical meaning. Yes, and no problem that Christians, they can carry swords. And the apostle of Jesus themselves, they carry sword to defend themselves. When they travel in the way, etc. But that's that, that, not to attack anyone. Uh, otherwise, name for me the story. Like, we know one story where when they came to, uh, to arrest Jesus and... Uh, one of the apostles, he took his sword and he cut the ear of the soldier. And Jesus, he forbid him from doing that and he healed that person immediately. And that is a proof again that Jesus must be God because how he can heal the ear of the man? He cut, he cut his ear. What does that mean? He put it back? How you can do that? He put a crazy glue? And then you will see Jesus is speaking to his disciples and he said to them many wonderful things. So in order to understand what Jesus is talking about, we better listen to him carefully and not to make a false judgment of false words. And Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely ye have received, freely give. Give. I mean to that. Now here you will see right away, the Muslim, they say to you, where Jesus said, I am God, worship me. Well, he just said that. He is ordering his disciples to go and heal the sick. Why Muhammad did not say to his companion, go and heal the sick? He himself cannot heal anyone. How Jesus, he said, cleanse the leper. How he said to them, raise the dead. Like what? 
even raise the dead? And then he said to them, cast out devils. And then he said to them, very important thing. You don't take money for that. Freely you have, you receive, freely give. So, not like Muhammad who said, anyone want to see me in a private consultation, he have to pay me first. For Muhammad is following the devil. So Jesus, he wanted to be sure that yes, they will go and preach and teach and they will they will heal the sick and they will cleanse the leper and they will raise the dead and they will cause the devil, but they will not accept wages. And he told them why. Freely you receive, freely you give. This is a gift from me. You have no power. I give it to you for free. All those miracles you do it in my name. So how you can take wages for it? You cannot claim it for your own. Here we see a clear proof that Jesus must be the Lord, the Savior, the God, the Creator. Because ordering anyone go and do that in, in his name, that's mean he is able to resurrect people from death easy. And for him, even he have the power. If you mention his name by his power, the person will be resurrected from the death. Now somebody will say to me, well, can you Christian Prince resurrect people from death? Well, Jesus did not give me that authority. If he does, I will. If he does, and you never know. I mean, there's many people that the Lord, he blessed them. So it's about who receive, he give it freely. If I receive the blessing of the Lord, so I can do miracle by his name, I will be able to do so. And here you will notice, none of those disciples say to Jesus, what do you mean resurrect, resurrect the death? Do you see anyone is wondering what Jesus is talking about? Why none of them? He said to him, what do you mean resurrect the death? How we can do that? I mean, is it normal? You obviously it is. Because they are a clear witness that what he can do and what he is able to accomplish. So nobody question for a second what you are talking about. If a person who never prove himself to be able to do so, then those people who they are there, whoever they are, they will say to him, you must be crazy. What do you mean go and resurrect the death, the dead one? You know what I mean? How you can say that? So in order to understand the Messiah, who is he as a person? Listen to his orders. You see, here you see the one who says to me in the same chapter is speaking about the, the, the sword, but in the same chapter says, go and resurrect the dead. So how he is how he is saying, I brought the sword, and then he says to me, or in the same book, it says, that I, I brought sword, not, not peace. But he is asking people to go and do all kinds of amazing stuff for the benefit of mankind. Healing the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast the devil. That is the best clinic in the world, and it's for free. And even he forbade them from to be people of money. Provide neither gold nor silver, nor brass in your purses. Provide neither gold nor silver, nor brass in your purses, nor script for your journey, neither two coats, neither shoes, nor yet staves, for the workman is worthy of his meat. And into whatsoever city or town ye shall enter, inquire who in it is worthy, and there abide till ye go thence. And when ye come into an house, salute it. And if the house be worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it be not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words, when ye depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. See? So Jesus, he ordered them to go in peace and to live in peace. Those who rejected you, you do nothing, just leave. You do not say go and kill them, slaughter them like Muhammad, whoever, you know, I'm, I've been ordered to fight and kill all mankind until they say there's no God but Allah and there's no prophet, false prophet except Muhammad. He said to them, you go in peace, you live in peace. Take your peace with you and leave. They did not accept you. Leave it for the judgment day. I am here.
Leave it for me. You did your part. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents, and harmless as doves. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils, and they will scourge you in their synagogues. And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak, for it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death, and the father the child. And the children shall rise up against their parents, and cause them to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. So do you understand now why he said, I brought sword, not peace? You will be hated for my sake. It's people who will hate them, not them. They will hate the people. But because you are an idiot, you decide to make it the opposite. So each time we speak to a Muslim, he says to us, Jesus said, I brought sword. But as you see, it's the Christians who they are going to be under discrimination, and they are the one who will be chased in the, chased in the synagogue, and they are the one who will be accused to be false, and they are the one who will be tortured, they will be killed, etc. You should be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles, for my sake. Because of me, this was what he meant that I'm coming with a sword. The sword will be on us, not on others. But the sword will be brought on us, like they bring them here in front of governors, and then the governor he ordered to slaughter them. And this is what is meant that no poison, no poison will kill you. Nobody can kill you. Jesus, he said, what is the benefit of somebody? He won the world, but he lost his himself. He lost his soul. So in order to understand who is the Messiah and what his teaching is, you have to read what he said, not a verse quoted by somebody to fool you. And look how amazing this wisdom, you know. Each time I read this, I cannot believe how amazing, how perfect it is. All of this he is standing, this, you know, this is in, in the old days, they don't have like a... They prepare speeches and this, this person, he have people around him, he is living between them. He's not writing a paper and coming here. Like, let me let me show you what I wrote yesterday. Oh, I was uh, meditating yesterday and I was writing this, and I came to you with some poetry. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. When they persecute you in this city. Flee ye into another. For verily I say unto you, Ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. The disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. It is enough for the disciple that he be as his master, and the servant as his Lord. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more shall they call them of his household? Fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing covered. That shall not be revealed and hid that shall not be known what i tell you in darkness that speak ye in the light and what ye hear in the ear that preach ye upon the housetops and fear not them which kill the body but are not able to kill the soul but rather fear him which is able so this is what we meant that we know you you know when when they spoke about that no poison will can kill you this is not about drinking poison don't fear death what we know the messiah himself he you know he died in the cross and he showed us that we should not fear death you see if the messiah he died and he did not came back from from death then all the message of the messiah and all the statement he said here it's false because how he said to us don't fear death and then he himself he died never come back 
but the Messiah he showed us he overcome death by death he showed us that everything he say every promise he made it was a true you see in the life of Jesus you you will see the best of the Messiah which is the, when I say the best is it's like the, the the conclusion that all the teaching of Jesus appear from the cross and after to be true why Jesus said love your enemy pray for those who persecute you if Jesus did not do that himself that would make him hypocrite but we notice that Jesus in the cross he said forgive them father they do not know what they are doing imagine you are in the cross crucified you have nails in your hands nails in your in, in, in your uh, in your in your feet and you are dying slowly and then yet now you are speaking to the father saying father forgive them so when Jesus says a pray for those who persecute you love your enemy the Jews at that moment they are the enemies why my enemy is the one who want to kill me as simple as that but for Jesus that he don't he is worried about them he loved them to the point he is in the stage of death and pain in the cross imagine if somebody cut your if somebody hurt your skin you might forget yourself and start cursing due to the anger and the pain but yet he is in the cross he knew that he you know what is coming he is living the moment of death dying slowly with a lot of pain people making fun of him shouting kill him kill him yet he did accomplish every teaching he said before love your enemy he love his enemy pray for them forgive them he did forgive them So yes, my friend, no poison can hurt us. For the poison and the biggest poison on this earth is hate. You see, you know, there is a crimes are done for, for money. But even, even this one is based on hate. Why? Because, you know, when you kill somebody to take his money, it's mean you don't love anything in this earth except yourself. And you hate everyone else everyone else is a competition for you and you want to eliminate that person so you can take his money it's hate it's hate to love others and everything jesus he taught is about not to hate anyone don't worry about the one who killed the body but worry about the one who killed the soul, the one who will take you to hell. So somebody might kill you. Die as a decent man. This death is just a stage of other life. Actually, it's a new start for a new life. It's not nothing bad about it. A believer should not fear death. This is why all the apostles of Jesus, when they asked them, to accept or to leave Christianity in exchange of life they refuse the Roman they used to bring Christians for fun they put them in the in the in the theater you know and they bring animals to fight with them supposedly and to, to eat them and just for fun it's like a it's like a football today let us bring some Christians and let the lions eat them yet those Christians they've been you know they choose to be eaten by the lion but not to deny Jesus so the lion can eat you let us make let me rephrase the the the, the, the word of Jesus about about poison let if, if a lion eat you still you are alive are you happy now <laughs> you know what I mean it's it is the same if a lion eat you still you are giving life again don't worry about it don't fear the one who killed the body the lion will kill your body and the one who brought the lion here is the real criminal the lion is just an animal 
the lion is not is not doing the bad I mean he is he's just an animal you know he is an animal who attack anything is a strange around him so the lion kill you but don't worry you will live the Messiah said whoever die and he believe in me he will live it doesn't matter who he who find he, he, he find his life will lose it and he who lose his life for my sake will find it do you see it this is what Jesus is talking about so in order to have the life which Jesus will give you later the promise of the promised life you have to lose your life today and lose your life today by the way does not mean you drink poison and kill yourself absolutely because some foolish will say to me ah oh, you mean that no it's mean your life today is not the purpose of your existence the pur purpose of your existence is to be with the Lord so you give everything you have now if somebody if you are preaching the gospel and somebody kill you you lost your life for his sake because the purpose of life for you was to do mission to bring to bring people to Christ but he did not say go and drink poison oh let me lose my life I want to jump from the mountain that's not what he's saying so the one who gave his life which means he became he chose to serve the Lord and he gave his life for the Lord that person will be promised the eternity and the real life not the temporary one the one who is in love with his life today he will lose his eternity of life tomorrow and here you will notice how beautiful that is and you will notice that the Christians the true believers they did exactly what he said and actually this is why Christianity became superior superior by love and by sacrificing not by doing jihad the Muslim they do jihad sacrificing themselves to get the versions and to get endless penis as Muhammad he promised them the Christian they sacrifice themselves in love for mankind he go to you risking his life in order to bring you to life you kill him because you think he is a bad person because you misunderstood him because you think uh, he's bringing to you a false religion because you're a pagan who believe if you kiss a black stone the black stone will save you you are a person who believe if you say shahada to a false man the child molester you are going to be a good person in heaven you've been taught that if you do jihad and attack the neighbors and get the blondie and enslave the people around you then you are promised eternity wearing green clothes and your endless penis is going forward so in order to understand the teaching of Jesus my friend we don't take a phrase and we make a story about it trying to divert the meaning far away from what it's meant and yes how in the world you idiot understand that the Bible says drink poison the Bible says in many places don't try your Lord is that correct guys don't try your Lord when the devil he came to Jesus he said to him if you are the son of God throw yourself and the angels will carry you he said to him it's written don't you cannot do that don't try to try me don't try your Lord otherwise I can say hey God if you are true make me tomorrow to win the lotto and tomorrow I did not win the lotto so obviously God does not exist that is a stupid this is not what the Bible teach so what some people they want to do is to try to themselves to make themselves masters and teachers when they themselves they do not know what they are talking about if we go to more verses in the Bible we'll find this one as an example we mentioned this about why you taught them in parables why you told them in examples for it is the easiest way for a human being to understand you see if you read any of the parables of Jesus which is said 
2,000 years ago, you will find them fit with your life today. There's an amazing wisdom with those parables. Not a single example Jesus he gave us in his stories to teach us does not fit with our time today. Remember, we are in the year, in the year 2018, and almost 2019, and yet every word of Jesus fit with our world today. That's amazing. When we go in the Quran, we will find the Quran saying, prepare for your enemy your horses. Speak to the Muslims in the future. What horses? You want to fight America by your horses? But if you read the teaching of Jesus, you will find that it doesn't matter what you read. It's perfectly fit with our world today, the world of technology. Right now, I'm sitting in America, yet you are listening to me from around the earth. And yet, every story Jesus said fit with the world today. And then you will see an idiot says to us, the Bible says the earth is a flat. How is that? He said the, 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 the Bible says the four corner of the earth. You idiot right now, if you open your map, you will see there's four corners in Google Earth. Does that mean it's a really corners? It's a figure of speech used for centuries and centuries and centuries. So don't play games and don't try to play fool and say, ah, I does say that. Actually, the, book, the Bible is the only book written thousands of years ago saying that the earth is in the, in, in, in the shape of a globe. If you go in the book of Job, you will see that the one who hanged the earth on nothing. It took the human being thousands of years to come to the conclusion that the earth is hanged on nothing. <laughs> and it is there in the Bible. But nobody noticed it. And nobody saw it. And actually, science they found today yeah, if you go to Job 26, verse number, I think, 7 or 6. Uh, let us try here in the same page. All right. Read with me carefully. He spread out the northern sky over empty space. It's an empty space. He suspended the earth over nothing. You know, this is actually, a, this is an international translation. I don't, this translation, I don't accept it. Let me change the translation. This is the last translation, by the way, I accept. And somebody might, might say to me now, oh, you Christians, you have many versions of the Bible. This is a translation, Abdul. Like you, you have translation, Yusuf Ali. We go by the original scriptures, and if any any of the translators make mistake, we you know we we seek the correctness and we correct it. So you will see here, he stretches out the north over empty empty place, and hangs the earth upon nothing. Do you see it? The Bible is, is, is full of things which is really, you know, I mean, uh, Job, the book of Job. Do you know how old this, this written is? This is very ancient. Always to remember the Bible is not a book of science and will never be and we don't want it to be the book of science and you will never see a Christian bragging about oh look but just I'm just trying to answer you about you saying the earth it have four corners otherwise we don't believe the Bible should be in any way in any mean the book of science but in a book of science will not accept that Mary she gave birth without a man that is not science. That is a miracle. Miracle is anything a human being cannot comprehend and cannot explain. If we can explain it, it's not a miracle no more. A woman, she never have a man. 
she never slept with the man and then she get a breath net that is a miracle that is not science that is against logic this is why you see the Quran saying stupid things as an example the Quran says how Allah can have a son if you don't have a girlfriend that because Allah is not the true God and because of that he is limited to the limitation of the man the man he cannot have a son without having a wife the wife she cannot have a son without having a husband or the women so due to that because of this which is the natural logic the 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 the, 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 the you know the nature the way you are made you cannot have a baby by your own it's we are made to have male and female in order to produce children so how how he can have a son if he don't have a girlfriend simply he cannot have a son because he have no girlfriend this is the excuse Allah he provide and because he cannot have a uh, uh, because he don't have a wife then we understand now the logic of Islam that to him do the uh, the primal origin of the heaven and the earth how can he have a son when he has no girlfriend so the God of Islam he have a man minded minded uh, logic and the man minded logic is how I can have a son if I don't have a girlfriend but he did not explain to us that because this is a contradiction because the Quran the same book teach that Mary she have no son she have no uh, husband sorry and yet she have a son and that again additional uh, you know prove that Islam is a false religion because this God is speaking about against his logic the same logic he used to prove to us that he have no son is the same logic we can examine him teaching him that Mary she have no man touch her no man slept with her it's a stupid book and the author is a silly person and his logic is very silly if there is any Muslim when I, when I call me please let me know I will open my Skype all right <clears throat> So, uh, we Christians, we don't speak of science in the Bible because the Bible is not a book of science. And there's many things in the Bible is against science. You know, the, you know what, what people they call science today is based on, mostly it's based, based on uh, uh, theories. As an example, the Big Bang, the teacher in school, that you know even when I was a kid they are teaching us in school that the earth was created because of an explosion blah 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 and they are talking about it as if it's real but this is a theory this is a very stupid theory because how there was nothing but some nothing explode they can't explain that to us there is nothing but nothing explode how nothing can explode you see they refuse to accept God because he said how can God create nothing from nothing but they are the one who believe in that not us we don't believe that nothing is coming from nothing we believe all the creation coming from God so they bring you what they believe it is a fact but the fact it is a theory there's many scientists they don't believe in the Big Bang but they will not bring them to you they adopt you know they, they, they the, the atheists they control a, a huge part of our education and they brought that to you and that's it you know you are just an, an a dummy who who believe what they say to you and then you believe it because the teacher said that to you as long as the teacher he said that to me uh, must be true now, by the way I never believe the teacher say anything to me <clears throat> because later I noticed that all what the teacher teaching have nothing to do with reality I remember when I was 
in high school or even before I don't, I, I don't remember what a grade uh, I asked the teacher uh, you know they, they they have a section in the history book about Arabic or Arab um, scientist Arab scientist <clears throat> and because supposedly we are Arab so we should be proud about Arab scientists so the teacher he said to us today we will talk about Al Khawarizmi Al Khawarizmi and I was listening to the teacher about this Al Khawarizmi a scientist blah 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 okay and you know I'm a person who go since I was a child I mean like I like I like to get I like to go deep in every sentence someone says, says to me I don't just take words and you know and let it go I, I like to to know what he's talking about so Al Khawarizmi Who is Al Khawarizmi? You know? I asked the teacher, I said, this supposedly he's an Arab uh, scientist, right? He said, yes. I said, yeah, this is why he is in the Arabic section of. Uh, I said, but what does his name mean? In Arabic, I could not find a meaning for this uh, Khawarizmi. He said, uh, you know, as you know, in Arabic, if somebody from a city, we say, uh, you know, uh, like if you are from uh, the city of Mecca, we call you the Meccan. If you are from Cairo, we call you the Cairon. If you are from Baghdad, we call you Al-Baghdadi, the same as ISIS leader. So this guy is Al-Khawarizmi. So he is, this is not his last name. This is where he is from. But I said, but what is, but this is mean that he is from Khawarizm. <laughs> he said yes. <laughs> I said, okay, sir, what is Khawarism? <laughs> oh, Lord. They are teaching us that this guy is an Arab, yet he is from Khawarism. That's mean he is not an Arab and he have nothing to do with the Arab. This guy is coming from the heart of Asia. How in the world you are teaching us that Al Khawarizmi is an Arabic, an Arab scientist? He said, uh, "Let us uh, let us continue. Let's continue." Like, you no, know, obviously it's a it's a fake uh, history. They collected all the famous names and they made them, you like it or not, they make them Arab. Anyone he is very, very well known to be, by the way, all those names, the Muslims they are proud about, they killed them and they tortured them and they accused them to be atheists or to be Christians, or it's, you know, which means they destroy their life. They never accepted them to be Muslims. Now, suddenly they are proud about them. And we can give example for those things. There is a there is a there is a program I used to watch when I was a I was a kid. It's called uh, Captain Cousteau. I think he's a French. And this guy he like uh, dive in the ocean to discover the secret of the ocean. After he die, the Muslim they say that this guy converted to Islam. How he converted to Islam? When? I will not be surprised. If the Muslim they say Christian Prince converted to Islam after I die. A week after I die, they will make a video says Christian Prince converted to Islam and he says Shahada. Uh, what his name? The the founder of Apple a company. They made him Muslim. But why? Because his father is Syrian, but this guy he grew. He grow in a in a in a family. He have nothing to do with the Muslims or Islam, and he was not buried in a mosque. He was not prayed. They prayed. They did not pray in his body in his mosque. And he was, you know, uh, he grew up in a Christian family. But not long after he died, they made him a Muslim. And now they are saying we are the one who made Apple phone. Steve Jobs. When the fact his father, he dumped him. He dumped him literally. 
this is why the the the, the family those family they adopted him because he have no parents the woman the, the mother is a hooker the father he work in a casino he made her bread net they dump him this family they took him they adopted him and he was a successful man you know we know the rest of the story because he's successful they made him a Muslim however you see because Islam seeking seeking power they always focus in like a celebrity to to uh, to make them as Muslims because supposedly that will bring them uh, many people who worship those men so when like uh, they targeted like Muhammad Ali etc because there is many they like this boxer so if he became a Muslim many they will become Muslims too but that will not work because sooner or later people they will listen to people like me and they will see that Islam is the most stupid religion ever you know when uh, <clears throat> When I was a kid, I went to a house of a Muslim. And it was the first time for me to see somebody praying as a Muslim. It was his dad. His dad, you know, he go up, he go down, he all go up, he go down. And I am watching, you know, I was like in the other room, but like it, they have like a big, uh, uh, like it's a big room separated uh, two parts. But I can see everything in the other room, big house. The guy, he go up, he go down, go up, go down, go up, go down. Okay, you know. Uh, and I was really very, like, let us say, me and this kid, we are very close to each other. Like, you know, we are like, we are matched to, to go together, have fun. He's a Muslim. And I notice that each time he want to pray, he open all the windows, which facing the balcony, which is facing the neighbors. All of them he opened them. He never pray. It is cold. It is winter. It, it doesn't matter. He always opened the windows. And once he was praying, and then the you know the window, uh, <clears throat> uh, you know, like the wind, uh, push it and close it. So he was moving his eyebrows to his son to open the windows, like, you know. He's praying, he's praying up and down, but yet he is, he's, he's, uh, he's whispering to his son to open the window. And <laughs> later I told his uh, son, I told him, why your dad, he opened the window, even when it's cold, I mean, it's cold. Like, you know, we, we froze until he finished. I mean, all the heat in the house is gone now. He said, well, I asked my mom, she said he liked, to see the, like, he liked the neighbor to see him. <laughs> We are just kids. We don't know what he like. What and we don't know what this is for. I mean, like, we are both of us. We are just two cute kids. You know, we have no idea. We are innocent. We have nothing. So he said. I asked my mom. She said to me, he liked the neighbors to see him. Even that, you will see Jesus spoke about it. Is that true? Even that, Jesus mentioned it. When you want to pray, don't pray in the corner. Don't pray in the public. Don't shout and say, I'm praying, as we see in Matthew 6, 5. Don't pray like the hypocrites. So Jesus, since the beginning, he warned us not to be Muslims. Muslims, they are people who follow a hypocrite man who wanted them to be hypocrite they are following the steps of their prophet if you go to matthew <clears throat> you would see jesus saying this matthew 6 Take heed that ye do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, 
Do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth, that thine alms may be in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray, standing in the synagogues, and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut to thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. I mean to that. You see, that is the teaching of Jesus. That is Jesus. A Muslim, he would say, actually once a Muslim, he asked me, he said, I never saw you praying. I said, you, why you, why you need to see me praying? He said, well, it looks like you're a Christian, don't pray. I said, no, we pray. But the, 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 the Lord, the Messiah, he warned us not to be the same as the Muslims, like you. He said, well, yeah, I agree, most of us, we are hypocrites, but there are some Muslims believe, really, and they pray for real. I said, if you pray for real, why you need to go and show everybody that you are praying? How many times, you know, I'm debating a Muslim, like Dr. Dr. Rohi, he need to go and pray. Or, you know, like many Muslims, they say, it's a time for me to go to pray. He have to tell everybody he have to pray. A Muslim, he's in a chat room talking in the microphone, suddenly, oh, guys, I have to go, I, I, I have to pray. He have to tell everybody that he is a good guy who pray to God. The same when they do donation. You see, the Messiah he, here, he spoke about this too. You see, there is people who send me donation. I do not need to thank them for you know, I'm, I'm not the one who can reward them anyway. I mean, what thanks, what thanks I can do? Someone is trying to be good and trying to help. What, what good I can do for him? They are not doing it for return. So he do it quietly. He don't brag about it. He don't go around and say, hey, I donated to Christian Prince $5. That is the spirit of a Christian person. The Muslim, they don't, they, they, they don't practice that. And by the way, you will see a lot of things Jesus, he said, Muhammad, he copied it and he claimed that this is the wisdom of his God. I can show you tons of examples of Jesus speaking and Muhammad, he take the credit for it and he said that Allah told him that. And this is additional proof that Muhammad is a false man. And he have no place between us. I always advise people to, in order to know uh, who is a person you think he is, uh, let us say, good to deal with. Not necessarily to teach you, I mean, in anything. Even in that, I take the teaching of the Messiah as a guidance for you, for me, to find out who is the person. Let us say I want to take you as a friend. Let us say I um, uh, um, I found a girl, I found her interesting, and uh, I'm thinking about getting married. Uh, let us say I found a person I want to do business with, uh, or you know uh, I want to go with some group of people just for fun, maybe a picnic. Before I make those actions, I have to make a decision. Can I be with those people? Am I? Are they qualified to be with me? Am I qualified to be with them? And how I do that? The Messiah, he taught me how to do it. The very easiest way, which is a golden, I cannot say even golden rule, it's a priceless rule. You know them from their fruits. People make speeches. They speak good, they do bad. Speaking good is very easy. Doing the good is the hard part. So in order to know who you should be with in anything in life. You follow the teaching of the Messiah from their fruits, 
you shall know them they will come to you wearing a clothes of sheep so not from their clothes obviously but they are wolves so we will not go by the clothes we will not be blinded by the clothes somebody he come to you he's a bishop or he's a priest he might be the devil himself he might be a child molester like Muhammad and by the way I heard that in Austria a woman she is sentenced to pay a penalty for saying Muhammad is a child molester my friend you should not say Muhammad is a child molester learn English he is a bit of fire and I, I guess if the if you say that the court will not make you pay penalty I mean what kind of a court this court is obviously it's a court of idiots if Muhammad marry a child she is six years old so how he can say he is not a child molester in fact he's not a child molester he's a child a child rapist molester he molest he did not molest he did full rape right so I agree he is not a child molester it's not a correct statement someone wanna call wanna call me is a Muslim okay give me a second to open my <coughs> to open my Skype just a second. You know, I'm afraid to open Skype. I open Skype, I get scared. I find like 200 missing call uh, because people, they call me after I'm done. I mean, I don't know. I think maybe they watch videos later. They think I'm still live or something. And like, boop, 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 like you open your Skype, you feel like, like the, 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 Notification is coming like crazy. Uh, okay, I am in Skype now. <coughs> if anyone want to call, I prefer Muslims to call. Really, I'm not. Uh, you know, I prefer always to have a conversation with Muslims. I like really to talk to Muslims because I feel that speaking to Muslim help both of us Christians and Muslims in the same time and at the end of the day be the judge all of you be the judge Muslims Christians atheists Hindus whatever you are be the judge you see Islam forbid the Muslims from speaking to Christians about Islam do you know that so how the Muslim want to convert me to Islam Muslims, they speak to you about Islam only if you don't question Islam. But there is Muslims like you know they debate. This is this is not really Islamic. Muhammad he never said to the Muslims debate the Christians. Muhammad himself never debated the Christians. The fact Muhammad, when the Christians they came to debate him, he ran away like a potato, like Shabir Ali. He ran away from me, always. And he told them, well, you are asking me about Jesus. Let us do this. Let us curse the one is lying. Chapter 3, verse number 61. So a group of a Christian, they came to Muhammad to settle down with him issues, he said about Jesus, which they don't believe in. Muhammad have no answer as usual and this is the case for all liars they avoid you see I can claim that I speak Chinese as long as you don't speak to me Chinese Ching -hong, hing -hong, hing -hong. okay I mean I made a Chinese voice but if there's a Chinese one between you he will laugh at you say what this guy is saying this is not Chinese so Muhammad is the same as someone who claimed that he knew Chinese but when the Chinese come to him he don't want to speak Chinese And here the Christians coming to Muhammad saying to him, okay, you claim that you know about Jesus, let us debate about it. So what Muhammad said? Oh, Allah told me, brother and sisters, let me put the screen up. Where is the guy he said you want to call me? If any one dispute in this matter, the matter of what? About Jesus. With thee, 
Now, after full knowledge, what full knowledge? Muhammad cannot answer. I mean, he have full knowledge, but yet he cannot answer them. If he have full knowledge, debate them. <laughs> Brother and sisters, Christian prince, he have full knowledge, but he cannot answer you. Because he have full knowledge, so let us do cursing party. Your mic, Abdul. Take the mic, please, and say, if I am lying, may Allah cut my nose. Okay. Your turn, Christian prince. Be the sitter. In the Quran, the Quran forbid us from debating the Christian. As an example, when the Prophet Muhammad, the Christian, they came to him to debate him. He did not debate them. He said to them, let us have Christian party. What Christian what party? Yes, Christian party. So instead to be a, a real Muslim, you have to debate as Muhammad. Allah told him in the Quran, we start cursing ourselves, and the one is lying. Supposedly, he will get tired first. Have you ever heard of a stupid religion like this? And look what Muhammad said. If anyone uh, uh, want dispute with you in this matter about Jesus, now after full knowledge has come to thee, say, come, 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 come. Let us gather together. Not to debate. No, no. Our sons and your son. What our son and your sons? You either those are bishop. They have. They are. They don't get married. They don't have wives. How they will have sons? This is additional proof that Muhammad is an idiot. He do not know that Christian bishops don't have children. Uh, you are our son and your sons, our women and your women. What women? They don't have women. Our self. And what do women have to do with this? Imagine our debate. Shabir Ali. He bring his wife. His four wives. I bring my wife with me. Uh, now I know why I'm not qualified to debate him because I don't have a wife. I mean, how I can debate with him and do this party, cursing party, if I don't have a wife? I have to get wives, not only one. Have you ever heard of a stupid statement like this? This is why we say there's nowhere to compare between the stupidity of Islam and the wisdom, the amazing wisdom of the teaching of Jesus. Why Jesus did not say to the Jews when they were arguing with him, let us bring your women, I bring my women, bring your children, I bring my children, I bring your goats, I bring my goat, and let us curse the one, the, 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 let's ask God to curse the one who's lying. <laughs> oh boy. And yet he claimed Muhammad had to have a full knowledge. If this is full knowledge, what full stupidity is about? If this is full knowledge, what is full stupidity is? <clears throat> and by the way, for all those Muslims, they say oh, they want to debate me. I mean, they cannot find me. Somebody sent me a, a text in Facebook, says to me, I don't know, a guy, I challenged him a long time ago in uh, in YouTube. He said he accepted to debate me. Okay, accept. Where are you? And call me. He accept. Call me. My Skype is open. Anyone can call me. <clears throat> Thank you for the one who texts me in Skype. Bless you too. Uh, my friend, stupidity speak for itself. Wisdom speak for itself. There is people who when they open their mouth, flea and flies and frogs will come out. And there is people who when they open their mouth, the amazing word of God will come out. People they choose to be savage over being civil. When you listen to the Messiah, he taught them even how you are foolish in your judgment about what make you clean. As an example, the Muslims, they copy some law from the Jews and they thought that if we copy the Jews, that will make us understand Judaism. So Muhammad starts saying to the Muslims, don't eat pork. But Muhammad never explained why we cannot eat pork. Any Muslim can explain to us why we cannot eat pork. If you go to the book of the Jews, you will find reasons. If you go to the book of the Muslims, you do not know why those things is happening. I mean, why, why you Muslim believe 
that you should not eat pork give me a reason we don't know Muhammad in the Quran speak about Israel 40 something time the word the name Israel appear <clears throat> yet nowhere in the Quran it says who is Israel why because it's a thief Muhammad is a stolen this name from the Jews you do not know who who is Israel what Israel who is the guy who the Quran keeps saying Israel 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 who is Israel shouldn't this God you see the Muslim they say to us the Quran is the perfect book there's people who call themselves Quran only Quran only okay you mr. Quran only who is Israel we go and look in the Quran we will find the name Israel appear in the Quran 41 time okay who is this guy we don't know what the name mean they don't know where the name is coming from they have no idea because Islam is an aftermarket copy fraud religion you go in the Bible you want to know who's Israel you go in the Bible you will find exactly how Israel became Israel and who is this guy whose name is Israel and who gave him the name in the Quran the whole story is missing for this guy is a thief if you ask a Muslim what Ishmael mean they don't know what Mikael mean they don't know what Jibrail mean they don't know what Allah mean they don't know do you remember when I debated with this uh, doctor Imam the guy who have a PhD from Al Azhar University I asked him what Allah you remember the, the debate is there just uh, maybe I don't know 15 days ago uh, I asked him what is Allah he said Allah uh, Allah is a word said by an Arab man we do not know who is he really guys the word the first one who say Allah is an Arab man <laughs> but we do not know who is he <laughs> so how you know he was an Arab but you do not know how is he which means in order to know if he's an Arab or not you have to know his name where he lived where etc but they don't know anything about him Yes, Allah is an Arabic word and it's said for this time by an Arab guy, but we do not know who is he. Okay. What Allah mean? Uh worship something. What 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 what? Do you do you do you remember guys? Do you remember when he said Allah mean worship something? Who remember? You can go and watch the debate if you don't believe me, Muslims. If you don't believe me, the debate is there down in the list. Go the debate name who is Allah. Huh? Dr. Ruhi, Imam Ruhi, have a PhD from Al Azhar University, the highest university of Islam in, in the world. Me, myself, I have the green Islam, but I'm not graduated from Al Azhar University. By the way, there's an idiot, he said, how a Christian prince, he can have a degree in Islam when in Islam, Islamic school is only accepted, except Muslims only. That's a big, fat, stupid lie, idiot. We are required in the Middle East to study law. Of uh, When we study law, we have to study all religions. Because law in the Middle East dominate or dominated by religion. So we are required. Doesn't matter if you are a Christian, you are a Jew, you are a Hindu, that because you are an idiot. So Allah, according to Dr. Rohi, mean worship something. So the Muslim they worship something. I'm so glad to know that. You worship something, not someone. <laughs> I worship something you just said something not someone something in fact that's not true you know because but because they do not know where the name is coming from this religion is the most stupid religion ever they do not know what the name of the God mean they do not even the name of the God because I explained to you many times that the true name of the God of Islam is not Allah it is Lah. Please, my friend, just don't text me in Skype just to say, uh, etc. You know, you can text in the chat with the rest.
if you want to call me call me if you want to call me later you know do, to, because you are shy because you have a question for me no problem but no text please I have my Skype open for Muslims to call me so yeah Bani Israel is okay who is who the, ch the children of Israel who is the children of Israel Allah knows best <laughs> before you tell us about the children of Israel shouldn't you tell us first who is Israel this is the most stupid religion ever he keeps saying the children of Israel but yet he do not tell us who is Israel the children of a Christian prince but we did not we will not exist in the time of a Christian prince so who is a Christian prince Shouldn't you tell those people who is a Christian prince? It's very funny and very stupid religion and the logic of this cult is very weird. Do we have any Muslim here would like to call me? And by the way, you know the the the, the Muslim uh, when they speak about Islam, you think like the the first moment you you hear a Muslim speaking, he start right away quoting you Quran. But the second you ask him what you are quoting, can you explain what you are quoting? He have no idea. And we can prove that no Muslim have an idea what the Quran is talking about because if you read all the interpretation books of the Quran, you will find they don't agree with each other. <clears throat> Uh, for those who they are in the chat, you know, guys, focus on my topic. Anyone who speak about me, just ignore him. Christian Prince, he looked like this, he looked like that. Who care? That is because the person is silly. Silly people speak about silly stuff. Why you care about how I look like? I look like Ahmadinejad. What's your problem? And look what we are talking about, and look what some people are talking about. Silly people speak about silly stuff. Right? I'm telling you, you know, there is people, they go to the church to listen to the, the word of God, and there is people, they go there to see what people are wearing. This woman, she's wearing that. Did you see that woman? <gasps> yeah, man, she have a lot of makeup. Really? Yeah, I saw her. Did you see her lipstick? I think it's not expensive. I think it's cheap, but she's trying to show off. That, that, those are silly people. Right? Silly people talk about silly stuff. And this is what Jesus said. From their fruits, you shall know them. Fruit of people is what they speak of and what they do. Gossip, stupidity, you know. Are you going to the church or you are going to 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 to, to pray or you are going to see a talk? What, what are you going there for? Don't be silly. Do we have any Abdul wanna call me? Mayday, Mayday. Any Abdul would like to call? Yeah, and by the way, I advise you if you have a friends. To choose your friends carefully because when you choose a stupid friend I, I maybe i don't know if i sh should use the word stupid but i think it is correct to say it because being being with silly person will make you silly too you see they affect you they affect you in the in the in reasoning they affect you in things the topic you talk about try to associate yourself with someone more educated because you will win by being with someone more educated for he will the second he talk he would teach and speak knowledge that's it i mean he's 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 very someone is wise the second he speak he speak wisdom you you attend you go you 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 practice your life going around with silly stupid people you will get to be silly you will come back home and say i have a new tattoo 
I mean, is that the victory you got in life? You got a tattoo? Okay. Tomorrow you will have a new tattoo. The day after you will have a better tattoo. You keep tattooing yourself until you became like a map. GBS map. How many tattoo you have, my friend? I have a lot of tattoo. I remember when I was in uh, a student uh, at that time I was in London. Uh, the um, uh, a relative of Suharto, you know Suharto, he was the president of uh, Indonesia. She is a very filthy rich because her her uncle, I think, I don't know, she is his niece, something like that. You know, they are thieves. So she want to show the people that the student that tattoo she have. You will not you will not believe it where she have it. She have no shame to take off her pant and show us, you know. I mean, this is how silly people are. Here we go. She got a tattoo there. I mean, I don't know, he must be proud with that tattoo. Anyway. Uh, by the way, I'm not involved in your private life if you want to have tattoo, but I mean, try to focus on something important in life, a target, something, a mission. What tattoo? What tattoo will do to you? And then you start putting rings in your nose and your ears and, you know, and then your eyebrows. What if you have a fight with somebody? He will rip you off. Unbelievable. You know? Uh, this guy he keeps saying Christian Prince is Lebanese. Well, I have to ban you, my friend, because you are being stupid and being silly. I told you many times, I am a black, blonde, African American from Japan. What's your business? You are a stupid idiot. Get lost. Sorry. I have to say it. Christian Prince is Lebanese. <laughs> Christian Prince is Lebanese. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I don't know. Here we go. We got an example of stupidity. We talk about very serious issues, and he gets like he he, he got the fox from his tail. <laughs> All right. Hello. Hello. Hello, Christian Prince. Hey, my friend. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Yeah. I'm just hearing that you are Lebanese. Yeah, and just laughing. I don't know. Every day I have a new citizenship. By the way, sometimes I'm Saudi, sometimes I'm Syrian, sometimes I'm Jordanian. I don't know. Sometimes I'm Iraqi. Uh, yeah. Now, um, I just wanted to make a contribution since I'm not seeing any Muslim calling. All right. Um, in 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 this is in regard to what you read about the the. Christian delegation from Najran that came to Muhammad in, in mm. Medina. Right. Now, uh, my question is, Muhammad called Jesus Isa. Uh, so what does this Isa mean uh, if we compare it to the uh, Christian Arab that call him Yasu? Well, I believe Muhammad, he was associating with those who use the greek name of jesus which is a uh, asos yes okay yeah but there is no confirmation of that i'm just uh, because i could not find mm -hmm. any, any reason for mm -hmm. him to use that name because we christians we never use asa if you go to any anyone in the middle east ask any arab question mm -hmm. uh, do, uh, do you believe in asa for sure he will know that what you're talking about about jesus because this is what the muslim says but we don't call him asa we never call him asa you know we use the arabic word which is yesua Yeshua, yeah. Yeshua mm -hmm. is simply you see, like in Arabic, we switch the shane to seen. So Yeshua became Yeshua, right? Like mm -hmm. we say Yeshua. Yeah. So yes. we say Yeshua, Yeshua al Messiah. Nobody, the, the word Messiah, Muhammad, he got it right, okay? Because this is, was a title, but mm -hmm. al, but always this guy he uh, he he made mistakes when it's come to the names, uh, and mm -hmm. and this and the same for like uh, Mary. Mary is the daughter of Umran, you know. Mm -hmm. Moses, yeah. his father is Umran. Uh, Aaron, his father is Umran. So Muhammad, he come to the conclusion that Mary, she is the sister of Moses. But but Mary, her father is not Umran. You know, Umran. Where, where he got the name from? So Muhammad, obviously, he he uh, because he is just trying to steal information. He thought mm -hmm. that he thought the word Umran with an M. 
is yeah. is Umaran, and there's a huge difference. And because he made that such a mistake, he thought that okay, well, the father of Moses is Umran, mm -hmm. the father of Aaron is Umran, and he learned from the Jews that they have a sister. Her name is Maryam. <laughs> and the but only Miriam. and by the way, it's true. Mar Miriam, Miriam is the mm -hmm. sister, is sister of Aaron and Moses, and this is what the Bible in 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 in, uh, uh, in the Old Testament says. So Muhammad he thought, as long as Mary Maryam is the sister of uh, Aaron and she is the sister of Moses, and they have the same name of the father. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why it says Zia Hukti Aruna. Yeah, Ya Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's very funny. But okay, so there's somebody who told me. Um, uh, maybe you can you can check on me that Imam Baidawi, that he says Isa means reddish, um, and it made me think about Esau in in the Bible, the brother to Jacob. Um, so I, so I don't know whether that could have any significance. Say, say, say again, please. What you say? Say again. Uh, Imam Baidawi, yeah, yeah, that he, he defines Isa meaning reddish. Well, Somebody you know, Isa, reddish. the Muslims they have tons of interpretation trying to find out the names because Muhammad he never taught them. As an example, what mm -hmm. what the word Messiah mean? Uh, anointed one, no, the in, most, the, in, most of the Muslims, to the Muslims, I don't know what, yeah, in Islam. Uh, uh, Muslims they, they are trying to find what those because those are foreign words for them, they do not know what they mean. Mm -hmm. So yeah, as I said, yeah. you know, Islam is a theft. It's not. This is why they do not know what the names mean. So yeah. according to Muslims, they come with the conclusion: the word Masih, Masih, is close to the Arabic with mas Masaha, which means masaha. yeah, yeah I which means wipe out or you know. So, so they're saying that the Messiah he have a flat feet. <laughs> <laughs> yes, eh? <laughs> and he had uh, long uh. hair and. Yeah, very funny descriptions of, of the Messiah. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, um, it's, I don't know, I don't know, I, I don't know how to, to, uh, to explain stupidity sometime, how it works. You know, like I follow a stupid prophet and then I try to be smart. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't work. You know what I mean? It, no, even, I... It, even if you are smart, even if you are a genius, you know, even if you are a genius, the second you are following a stupid teacher, you became a stupid too because you are trying to explain stupidity by being smart. Yeah, I, I feel like the, there is a progression in Muhammad's life uh, from Mecca to Medina. Uh, in, in Mecca, he seems to be a little bit humble, maybe because they were a minority. They, they, and then when, when he gained power, uh, now somehow even the Quran begins to change, you know, because like in the initial period, it told people La din, there's no compulsion in religion, but now in, no, in no, Medina. No, no. no, this is this this verse have nothing. This you see, this is not even what it's meant. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Muhammad, when he said that verse, it was about that he heard. That uh, the non-Muslims they are forcing their children not to convert to Islam. So Muhammad saying to them, "There's no compulsion in, in religion, you know, which means you cannot mm. fo you cannot force your kids not to join Islam. It's not about you're free." Oh, uh -huh, I see. Uh, yeah, this is <laughs> this is not this is a wrong interpretation. You know, the Muslim they use it always. Uh, uh, you know, as always, the Muslim they quote to misquote. Mm -hmm. They don't quote really. To say the truth, they quote to misquote. They quote to prove a point which is not true in their book. But if we go and, and read the details, if we do the, do a little search, we will find mm -hmm. that this verse has nothing to do with you are free to to uh, to to leave us now, because it's because it's is it Muhammad who said who who uh, who changed the religion kill him, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. Isn't it uh, uh, Muhammad who says kill them? Uh, you know, uh, uh, those who refuse to believe or those who who. Uh, uh, who left Islam? Yeah, whoever that Islam. changes his religion, killing. Yeah, so you know that means Muhammad. If if this is true, Muhammad. If Muhammad said that you cannot force somebody to to convert to religion, then all his story in, in Islam is false because all of Islam, the Quran says, fight those who don't believe in Allah, not those who fight you. Mm. You, know? you know. Yeah. When he say fight those who fight you, we understand it's about people fighting him. 
but he says fight those who who do not believe, believe in Allah and don't acknowledge the religion of the truth and don't acknowledge you and uh, as a prophet etc from the Christian and the Jews until they pay judges yes so Muhammad here trying to make money now he have enough men and now he's looking for excuse how I'm going to strip you from your money and your land and your women so I would say Allah told me that okay fight those who don't believe you know mm. yeah yeah it's so it's so it changes Allah seems to change his mind yeah well, you know, Muhammad is a is a is a is a politician, you know, and uh, uh, every situation have different belief, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like you well, know, uh, uh, <laughs> like uh, you know, the, uh, there's many people they are like this, by the way, you know. Uh, like, if if Muslim became uh, uh, like let us say, there's some town in USA have a big population of Muslims. So you will see politician suddenly speaking about, about the Prophet Muhammad that he was an amazing man because they want to win the vote, you know. If the population yeah. was Jews, they would speak about uh, you know he would be a Jew. They, they, you know, like like Obama when he when he uh, in, the, in the election time all his life he make fun of the Bible. Suddenly he's holding the Bible and he became a Christian supposedly. He go and he he, he visit Islamic countries. He quote the Quran. He go to Israel. He wear the hat of the Jews and he pray in the front of the wall. He sit with the as atheist. He make fun of the Bible, so he is, uh, you know, he's multi-religion. All right. Yeah. 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 So, so you know, uh, uh, always, always we see uh, that a person who change his 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 uh, let us say uh, his position from things. Mm -hmm. You see, we can accept. We can accept that as an example. God says to to uh, Adam, or you know, God created Adam and He created His children. Okay, now the yeah. children of Adam they have no choice but to marry from each other, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, but then long, long after, we have rules that you cannot do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's not Adam like overnight he changed that you cannot marry your sister. Mm -hmm. And Muslim they can't explain to us how this man he says something in the morning he changes mind afternoon. Mm -hmm. You know, as an example, uh, yeah. when when Muhammad uh, he sent his army to fight uh, the uh, the infidels, supposedly, mm -hmm. but the fact he is the infidel, and he told them that one hundred of you can fight one thousand of them. You know, yeah. Chapter eight, verse number sixty-five. The Muslims, mm -hmm. the Muslims, they went to the war. And they were, you know, they found that this is a false promise. What one? What one hundred to one thousand? That's like a. This is like an American movie. Sylvester Stallone shooting everybody, you know. <laughs> so mm -hmm. the, he, you know, they, when he came back, Muhammad, he have to fix it. He exaggerate with his lies. So look what he said. Oh, Prophet, rose the believers to fight. If there is twenty amongst you, patient and preserving, they will vanquish two hundred. If a hundred, they will vanquish. A thousand so one to ten right away the verse after it says for the present Allah has light in your task okay he knows that there is a weak spot on you like what he don't know that the weak spot before <laughs> but even mm -hmm. so if there are a hundred of you patient and preserving they will vanquish 200 what <laughs> happened from one to ten to one to two so Allah has, has suddenly changed his mind. No, he's you see, he yeah, he's he's a liar, and he got busted, and now yeah. he have to fix it. I mean, he, uh, obviously, it was too much to believe in to be true, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, like uh, you know, like uh, uh, there there's a joke about a guy he he exaggerate in his lies. So uh, you know, his wife she told him, my husband, each you know, each time we have visitors, you exaggerate with your lies. I mean, you make it so big to. I mean, it's obvious. So he yeah. said, okay, next time, if I say a lie, I start coughing. I don't notice myself, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so she's okay. So you know, he have visitors, and he told them. They said to him, okay, what are you doing these days? He said, well, I took a government uh, project, and I'm going to build a wall. The length of that wall is one thousand kilometer. The, the wife she start coughing. <laughs> he said, "Okay, you know what? It's true. It's one thousand kilometer long, but it's one centimeter, centimeter wide." 
<laughs> so post, you know, he fixed it. Like, you know, he exaggerated there in the length. So let us make it. Yeah. So, so Muhammad is no better. You know, you need to cuff next to him. So you tell him that Muhammad, come on, that's too much, buddy. What are you talking about? You know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and this is obviously like he like isn't him ashamed to say that that now he found that you have a weak spot on you. What do you mean he ever found you? Because this is God. Who's talking here? Allah. Mm -hmm. How Allah he just found a weak spot on you. Yeah. And if you read the two verses, you will notice it says, O Prophet rose the believers to fight. If there's 20 amongst you, patient and preserving. In both verses, patient and preserving patient is required. Same. So nothing changed. The condition is the same. You see? Both mm. both have the same exact condition, like we know, because we know if condition change, then result can change, even in chemi chemistry, even in physics, you know. Like, but 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 how can Allah change His mind when this Quran is supposed to be in heaven, in the seventh heaven? My friend, if God He promised me I would have victory, who care about how many anyway? I mean, what this is, what the, what the point of one to win one hundred or ten? Are you saying to me that Allah He can help you to the to the maximum of one to ten? If it's one to eleven, you will lose. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? If yeah. God, if God, yeah. He sent me to war and said to me, "I am with you," that you will win. That's it. If there's a billion person in against me, if God is with me, who could be against me? So what yeah. it what it's mean to have one would win against ten? This is obviously that this is not going to be God. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. number here means nothing. It's stupid. And why he's changing numbers? If he is a promising them victory, they will be victorious. If he is a promising them to lose, they will lose. But, wow. but but because he is, you see, when we read something, we have to go deep in details and we have to explore what is between the words. The problem is most of mm. people don't want to do that. They just read it. They don't find anything wrong. Said, okay, Allah, he told them, etc. And then he told them that. But th this is a clear you know, evidence that so there is something wrong. Sometimes I compare um, I compare Muhammad with the prosperity gospel preachers of these days because you see like it takes them it takes the Muslims to war and then when they find spoils there it comes in chapter 8 and verse 1 he says all the spoils belong to uh, to Allah and to his messenger mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. we cannot we cannot question God. So it basically belongs to Him. And uh, yeah. and when Muhammad he he uh, he was worried about himself, not because he's not going with them in the war. He want to guarantee that he will have his booty. So he made a <laughs> verse saying that the fifth from every attack to him and to Allah. <laughs> he want to preserve his share, like you know, the best of the booty yeah. have to go to the Prophet. So I have to say to you, and later we find in the Quran. That the Muslims accuse Muhammad that he stole an underwear. Hmm. I mean, imagine, imagine what kind of a prophet and what kind of companion they accuse mm -hmm. their prophet that he is a thief. And they are, by the way, all of them they are thieves. They are talking about stolen clothes because the clothes they are fighting over, a piece of a clothes is missing. It is stolen when they attack a caravan. So hmm. Then they accuse the, there's a piece of a cloth which is missing, and then who is the one who took it? They say, Okay, the prophet obviously is the one who took it because look like it's a habit for Muhammad to steal things, they are the best expensive stuff. So you will see chapter 3, verse number 161. It says, mm -hmm. It is not for a prophet to be a thief, because the one who is a thief he is going to be brought to me by a chain in the judgment. Okay, but 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 if God of, 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 of the God of Islam is a true God, and there is somebody accused the prophet to be a thief. Shouldn't Allah says to us, who is the one who took the underwear? <laughs> I've never heard. Until, until, until now, until now, by the way, <laughs> if you if you if you get any news, let me know, please. Until now, the underwear is missing. <laughs> the verse in the front of us. It's the, I mean, if God is a true, shouldn't Allah He says, okay, go to the house of this guy, open the drawer, or look under the bed, or ask him to ask it to take off his pants, and you will see he is wearing the underwear. This is God. He can he can tell us where is the underwear. But saying it's not Muhammad who stole it, that's stupid. Tell us then who is the one who stole it. So there is a stolen underwear that is still missing. Until now. Until now. Uh, we can give you a description if you are if you like to work as a special detective to find it. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> I 
think let me, I think let me sleep and try and find it. Yeah, maybe if you have a dog, he can chase the smell because <laughs> obviously the smell will be all over. Imagine underwear by Muhammad. Uh, you see, the, the whose who's underwear it was. It, uh, you know, they attack they attack people and they, they, oh, they, they attack a caravan. Yeah, and they stole their clothing and stole their money, and uh, you know because they are savage. You know, imagine there are a bunch of thieves, obviously. Because where, where where is that explanation? Uh, in the interpretation, you can go and look. You know, it's uh, here. We go. Let me show you. Uh, give me a second. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, you may, the Muslim they might say to uh, you know like okay, you're making things up. Well, where do you get this from, Christian Prince? Where are you getting this from? I never heard mm -hmm. this before. I mean, each time I speak to a Muslim, he said to me, "I never heard this before." Mm -hmm. Yeah, I because know, I don't know why I am the only one who heard this before. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my! All right. Oh, let us see. We go to the website of the Tafsir. You see, we don't do what the Muslims do. We don't explain things up to us. We mm -hmm. go and we see how they understood this. So this is the interpretation website made by yeah. Muslims. I have nothing to do with it. And this is the official government website of the Kingdom of Jordan. And the King of Jordan, for those who do not know, he claimed that he is descendant from Muhammad. That explains why he is very much corrupt. And here you will see. Oh, by the way, that reminds me that the uh, the Israeli Prime Minister today went to Oman. I don't know whether you saw that in the news. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Look here. Do you see it? This is Tafsir al Jalalain. When some red velvet went missing in the day of Badr. And some people they began to say the prophet took it. <laughs> <laughs> it is it is a red underwear made by Victoria's Secret. <laughs> and and now imagine God Himself, He received a fax. <laughs> And Allah is an alarm. So Allah He sent a verse saying, It is not the Prophet who took the underwear, you idiot. It's someone else. Okay, who is that someone else? It's actually this is a proof to us that the one who took the underwear is Muhammad. Because if there is someone else, he should say to us, Who is he? he, he Allah is not in a habit of mentioning who it is. You know, even when he says it is not Jesus that was that was crucified he doesn't tell us uh, he doesn't tell us who he just says it wasn't jesus it was somebody else you see in the quran the quran says that jesus he tell you what you hide in your houses okay yes. now jesus can tell us what we hide in our houses and he tell us what we ate at home we what we eat even what we eat what we hide what we store mm -hmm. which means he knew the unseen and then an issue about muhammad accused by the muslims look how savage these muslims are that he stole an underwear and then allah he sent us a verse saying it is not Muhammad who took the underwear. Okay, who is the one who took the underwear? <laughs> no, honestly. And what kind of God? I mean, look at the mm. level of this religion. God defending a prophet who accused by his followers, the best of his friends, the companion, that he stole an underwear. But how can this underwear of us be in the Quran that is supposed to be in heaven before creation, before everything was created? Oh, you see, I mean, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, no, not only this. You see, Muhammad he said that the the angels goes to Allah in a fear of one hundred year, one hundred one thousand year. So how they accuse him just a second ago that he stole the underwear, and then the angel need one thousand years to go to bring the Quran and come down, and and then here we go, we get a verse that Muhammad saying to them, it's not me, Allah. He said that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, by the way, uh, uh, all people who they are listening, please, please before you leave the chat, check off your underwear just to be sure you did not you know, don't accuse me tomorrow. I don't want anyone to accuse me that I took your underwear. Hello, you know. Maybe maybe it was green. And then I have no, then I, I will have no choice except to to ask Allah to send me a verse to say it's not for a Christian prince to take your underwear. It was someone else. <laughs> All right, my brother. Thank you. It was nice talking to you. Thank you for calling, my friend. God bless. Take care. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. All right. Thank you. This is a religion, and this is a prophet. I am, I am one billion time qualified to be a prophet more than Muhammad. You see, I'm a sinner, man. The Bible says all men are sinners. But 
I cannot compare myself to this guy in any way in any mean I never stole an underwear I never killed somebody to take his shoes and his sandal and to take his donkey and then the donkey speak to me and he says to me I don't like females imagine you are a pirate or you are a bandit you are the one who robbed people in the street you stole a car of somebody and you jump in the car and then you ask the car do you like females and then the car says to you I don't like females I mean have you ever heard of such a stupid story the prophet he killed a Jew he took his two sandals he took some gold and he took a donkey his name is Yafur and Allah created 60 Yafur all of them they are made for prophets make sense I mean Allah he made limousine for every prophet all of them they are from the family of Yafur and they are Jewish <laughs> What do you mean I cannot take anyone underwear? It's very easy. That's, that's very easy, my friend. It's very easy. Just tell them if the heaven of Allah door is open, everybody will take his underwear off. <laughs> it's a porno style heaven. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, so then uh, the prophet, imagine you are first time a human being speaking to a donkey. What is the question will be? Like, Imagine if God gave you the gift that you can speak to animals. And then the first question you ask the donkey, hey donkey, tell me, do you like females? The donkey said, oh, 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 I don't like females. <laughs> A gay donkey? Unbelievable. I mean, guys, do you think this donkey I mean, a female donkey, she broke his heart since then. He don't like female donkey. He like male donkey only. <laughs> I'm a truly, truly convinced that Islam is a true religion and there's no way. I mean, that's obvious. It's obvious. It's in front of you. It's like, like clear, like, like light. It's like light. Yeah. <clears throat> and by, by the way, do you know that this donkey, this is the same donkey, Yafur, he is the first one who commits suicide in the history of Islam. Do you know that? According to the book of Sirah, when the Prophet, peace upon him, he died, Allah pray on him and salute him die, the donkey, he went to an empty well and he jumped in the well. Man, this is a true love. That is a true love. Oh boy. I mean, it's put yourself in the shoe of this donkey and the Prophet, he died. Do you expect... The donkey should stay alive a day after that. He will commit suicide right away. And that makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. And the donkey name is a Jewish name. He is he's a son of Shilam. <laughs> Yafur, it was a nickname given to him by Muhammad. <laughs> Why he called him Yafur? Because he liked to play with the dust. <laughs> Oh boy. <coughs> I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I mean <clears throat> obviously, uh, you people, they are jealous because Islam is an amazing religion. And you are you are trying to make fun of the Prophet because he's amazing. It's obvious. And by the way, the Prophet, he is a person full of wisdom. He is full of wisdom. To the point, Allah, he sent an angel to make a plastic surgery and to cut his chest and install a dish of wisdom. <laughs> Literally, he is full of wisdom like a cabbage. Have you ever heard of a prophet of God? His God needed to make a surgery for him in his chest. And he installed wisdom in his chest. Not only wisdom, wisdom and faith. Oof. Only in Arabia, we have faith come in dishes. Please, if you like to have some dishes full of faith, contact a Christian prince. He's an Arab and he can lead you where he will get commission for sure for uh, giving you the details about where you can purchase your first dish of faith and first dish of wisdom. You want to be wise? We are the Arab. We know how to make you wise. We have dishes. Of wisdom what kind of wisdom you want to have please uh, we have dishes it tastes shrimp because it have a flavor you know the, the wisdom we have have taste 
and every taste have different flavor and different uh, way it's made but all of them they are wonderful and there is a uh, dishes for like high class um, depends how much you spend <clears throat> Oh boy! Any Muslim have uh, you have a problem with what I said? Any any Muslim here want to accuse me that I did lie? That Muhammad he received his wisdom by a surgery, a plastic surgery, and the wisdom was brought to him by uh, dishes. Let us read this hadith here. Let us find it first. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Most of them say Alhamdulillah, but I don't know why. Okay. If we go in the Quran, in the Hadith, sorry. Let us search for a certain Hadith. It was narrated. Uh, let me search for more strong Hadith. You know, Sahih al-Bukhari is better. All of those saying the same story, but I wanna I wanna go to Sahir Bukhari. This is Sahir Bukhari. <laughs> Let me open the tool for a drawing. Hold on. Uh, please don't forget not to invite your friends. Um, let us see. You see, the Muslim they might say Christian Prince is not telling the truth, but that nobody is calling me to prove me wrong. And here we go. I always show what I I'm talking about. I never I never say something without showing the proof. Here we go. Read carefully with me. I don't know if the text is clear. Let me know, please, if the text is not clear for you. Is it clear? Can you guys read it? If you cannot, uh, tell me so we can zoom in more. <coughs> so look what it says. Um, let us highlight so people they can read and see what we are talking about all right so the two angels they came to muhammad when he was almost asleep etc blah 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 and they brought with them water from the well of zamzam among them jibril he took a charge jibril always in charge i mean jibril is the boss Jibreel cut open the part of his body from his throat, between his throat to the middle of his chest. <laughs> By the way, it doesn't say that. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say to the middle of his chest. Uh, it says he empty, you know, mean, mean, uh, uh, from from his uh, from his throat all the all the way down to his, his balls, and we can show the other hadith too, and then. Uh, his chest heart and took all the material out all the material screws uh you know rasor uh, uh the all all material all material you can find in the chest of the prophet muhammad he took it out of his chest and then and abandonment okay guys where is the abandonment located somebody tell me what is the abandonment what, what, what is the abandonment how they said how they said to us in the translation they cut his chest and then they are talking about and the abandonment uh, this is a clear uh, proof that it's it is yeah it's down all the way to his testicles so and the abandonment and wash it with zamzam water it's very you're very you see i mean this is scientific this is scientific you cannot install wisdom my friend take a note in order to install if you have if you are a doctor you want to do plastic surgery and let us say a woman she come to you because she want to have bigger breast and you want to install wisdom instead of silicone in her boobs excuse my language so you have to wash the place of the surgery with zamzam otherwise you will have a failure sorry i'm telling you i'm telling you this is the first plastic surgery in the history you see the american the western they say they are the one who came with this surgeries it's false it's allah and jibril is the first doctor so he cut the chest of Muhammad, the throat of Muhammad, the belly of Muhammad, all the way down to his testicles, and now he took his abandonment out, and he washed it with zamzam. 
with his own hands I'm so glad that he is not fit that she is doing it with his feet till he cleansed the inside of his body man you guys you should see what came out from the body of Muhammad unbelievable carbon the second oxide of carbon I'm speaking Arabic way uh, 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 steel iron I mean the Prophet he used to swallow everything so he cleaned everything screws screwdriver knives everything fork even they found fork inside mashallah <laughs> and then a golden tray the tray containing a gold ball wow it's not only golden tray no then there is a ball in it full of belief if 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 if, if. i mean this is serious that here we are getting deep here you see guys you will not find this in christianity why jesus did not bring for you a dish of believe uh, christians i'd be sorry for you in islam believe is very easy god he sent you a dish of belief he cut your chest and your abandonment and then he installed the brother <laughs> and you are telling me islam is not a true religion obviously it is Look at this. This is this is this is true. This is must be true. And wisdom. Look what 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 what? Wow, that is astonishing. All my life, I never thought that high tech technology will come to the point. You do not need to go to school to earn knowledge. All what you need to do, you ask Allah. And then he sent you Dr. Jibril. Dr. Jibril, by the way, he is the most famous doctor in the world. He cut open your heart and your chest and your abandonment. And then, friend, he bring water of Zamzam. And then he clean inside. I mean, look at the logic. Step after step, it's very logical. Very logical. Inside your body, he clean you out. And then, my friend, he bring a tray made of gold and have a ball on it and both of them they are made of gold do you know why my friend why it's made of gold this is scientific by the way imagine he uses steel what if rust is there bacteria right away bacteria right away you die you will be infected this is very scientific and this is a very professional it was a tray of gold and then not only tray of gold then the ball is it itself is made in gold so like like extra protection for perfection and then he bring a the ball which is full of belief look he did say full guys did you notice the word full let me let me zoom in anyone knows why he said full anyone knows why he said full why he didn't say uh, has wisdom why, why he said full Uh, any Muslim there want to tell us why he said full full why he said full what what why it's not half <laughs> because the brother brother this is Muhammad the Prophet Muhammad do you think Allah will send the ball have half wisdom are you crazy or what it must be full full to the point the top it cannot take no more <laughs> okay and wisdom and was brought and then Jibreel stuffed the, guys does it say they're stuffed am I saying that or they are saying that does it say they are stuffed I remember my mother she used to stuff uh, zucchini with rice and uh, beef that is wise it was so delicious and so tasty and Jibreel is doing the same he stuffed the chest and the abandonment of the prophet with wisdom and belief okay muslims when muhammad he go to the bathroom after the surgery do he poo poo believe and wisdom because it's in his abandonment i mean this is in his stomach my friend why in the world he put wisdom in his abandonment do you, do you remember this guy who converted to islam that the uh, the the 
the one who was playing in Emirat, they hired him to work in their team. And they told him if you convert to Islam, they'll increase your salary. So they asked him to take shahada. He said, Muhammadam, Muhammadam, <laughs> stuffed with wisdom. I mean, this is too much. Muslim, this is truly, truly too much. Obviously, the prophet here is not lying. It's a very clear evidence that this is true. If the prophet have a diarrhea, Allah forbid, he will diarrhea all his wisdom. <laughs> oh, damn, I see. Stupidity. Stupidity is a way of life these days. It's really sad. I mean, I'm really, I'm not really making fun of. Uh, of the Muslims are making fun of the stupidity of Muhammad and how a human being became stupid to the point to believe in this. I mean, I feel sorry for you, Muslim. Sorry. That's sad. How in the world do you believe in such a garbage? What's wrong with you? What is your... God gave you a gift. God gave you a brain. Do you really believe in this garbage? You know, isn't it you Muslims, they say to us that if Allah, he wants something to happen, he say B is going to be? Okay, here we go. Muhammad, he needed, obviously, he needed plastic surgery. Why Allah don't say B? Be wise and be... And, and what... Since when you install wisdom in the chest of somebody and we install believe, believe, Muhammad, believe is coming by surgery? That means Muhammad don't believe in Allah. It was just a surgery. So if Allah now do a surgery in my chest, I will become tomorrow a believer. You go in the surgery room, you are an atheist, you wake up, you are a believer. <laughs> oh, I don't know. You see, because today I'm doing the broadcast in different timing, which is not the time I do broadcast, and I have 234 people only listening. Um, but it's okay. Uh, uh, I wanted to uh, to talk to those who they are from different continent and far away from us, which usually they don't get the chance to be with us live. Many of them, they like to be with us, but they cannot. <clears throat> um, do we have any Muslim would like to call me? Any Muslim have a comment? Any Muslim would like to have a comment? And by the way, when Muhammad, he say stupid things after the surgery, I mean, how how funny, stupid Muhammad was to the point if he needed a surgery, plastic surgery of wisdom, and then after the surgery, he said the most stupid things still. You know what I mean? Like now after Muhammad, he got the surgery. Did, did Muhammad start speaking smart? <laughs> oh, Lord. <clears throat> Oh Lord, life is funny. Life is short, but it's full of sadness and funny. And sometimes there's like a there's a sad comedy, you know, sad comedy. This is a sad comedy. A billion, more than a billion human being believe in this garbage. Very sad, and they ignore. The Lord of Wisdom, the Messiah, the Christ, the Savior, the one who resurrects people from death, the one who, ta who taught love and wisdom. My friend, did you ask yourself why Jesus did not need a surgery? In the Quran it says that Jesus is speak, spoke in the cradle. How come Allah did not send Jibreel to put wisdom in the chest of Jesus? How Jesus is a child, but yet he is speaking immediately as a wise person that is my lord my friend and this is your prophet my lord the messiah he said to the dead man go from death and he go muhammad is telling us a story nobody there's no witnesses for it anyway and what and, and what kind of god this god is he need to make a plastic surgery and install wisdom since when wisdom they come in dishes and since when 
you are a person beloved by God because God installed wisdom in your heart. So now Muhammad he became a believer because he installed a dish of wisdom in his chest. And Muhammad, you know, Muhammad is reporting to us this story. Is he conscious or unconscious? Muhammad is like a zombie and they are cutting his chest and he's watching like oh he cut my chest now oh 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 he taking my heart oh 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 he take my he kick my kidney this is my kidney I hope they are not stealing my kidney to sell it in the Muhammad is awake or he is asleep so he's awake and they are cutting his all his part and they are taking it off was it a torture party It's a true story, my friend, full of wisdom and reality. This is the reality show. And by the way, if you don't believe in this, obviously you have a mental issue because this is very smart to believe. And me myself, I believe in it. <laughs> ah, oh boy. <clears throat> and by the way, do you know that even the wisdom of the prophet was stuffed not only in his chest and his belly and his stomach. No, 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 no. Even his nerves. Read with me, read with me. I don't want you to miss that. But because this is very dangerous. Look, 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 it says. <sighs> I don't know who is the crazy here. Read with me, Abdul, for, for the sake of any God you believe in. They brought to them a ball full of belief and wisdom was brought and Jibreel stuffed his chest and his throat blood vessels with it blood vessels he stuffed the wisdom and the belief in the blood vessels that's deep that is seriously deep if you take the blood of the prophet it's not going to be a positive all negative it is going to be blood wisdom <laughs> Allah, that's too much that's really this is wise the angel he stuffed his blood vessels with wisdom and faith not only his chest and his stomach so if we punch muhammad in his arm or his toes he will bleed wisdom that's wise that is super wise and extremely intelligent how dare you not to believe Islam what's wrong with you how dare you do we have any Muslim have a comment any Muslim have a comment you don't dare to make a comment? I understand. But yourself, you are a Muslim, but in his shoe, and you are listening to this. What he can say? I mean, obviously, this is a big fat lie. What is vessels? What? 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 Oh, Lord. <clears throat> I pray to the Lord, the Savior, the Messiah, the Christ. His name is a glory. His word is wise and wisdom. Who gave life, who created life, that made the Muslims today, they will study again their cult and rethink that they made a big mistake by not following the Messiah. My friend, I don't know how smart you are. I don't know how much educated you are. I don't know if you are a person of a PhD or a person who never been in school. But the Messiah is for all and he loves you all. And there's no better than him to listen and to learn from. This is not from God. And this man cannot be from God. 
God the Almighty is called Almighty God for a reason, for He is Almighty, which means He is all powerful. He do not need to make a plastic surgery to fix a problem in the chest of a person. And what is the problem? He have a lack of intellect and knowledge and wisdom and faith. God don't correct your wisdom and faith by surgery. The true God is the one who said to the dead man, rose from death and he rose. Go and he walk. That's what Jesus did. Carry your bed and run. Walk and he walk. See to the blind and he saw. What a plastic surgery. Did you hear that Jesus made a plastic surgery for the dead man? Did you hear him that he made a plastic surgery for the eyes? The funny, the Muslim, they say, in the time of Jesus, there was science was very advanced. What Jesus advanced? What science, you idiot? Did he do surgery? Did he give medicine? What science? How stupid even this argument. And Jesus was, exist 600 years before Muhammad. So you are telling me, in the time of Muhammad, it, the science was not advanced, but in the time of Jesus was advanced? And since when the science of advanced, the one you are talking about, we are in the year 2018. Who can make a blind man see by touching his eyes with some mud? Who can make a person who cannot walk, walk by saying to him, walk? He did not take him to the gym. He did not do massage to him. What science and what, what are you talking about? False explanation because they cannot explain the amazing power of the Lord. But yet they come to us with a false story to explain to us that Muhammad was a fool and Allah, he installed a dish of wisdom, plastic surgery. <clears throat> My friend, the one who is asking me to refute the miracles according to Wakabidia, I have books two books the deception of allah and quran and science in depth both of them they have nothing to do except refuting the lies it's coming in those miracles and the first part of the deception of allah speaking about general things muslim believe in and then you will see in when you advance in the book reading you will find i'm answering all what is claimed to be miracles in islam all of it it's false is not true so don't tell me can you refute and if you know a Muslim he dare to call me right now and tell me about one miracle ten miracle five miracle seven miracle 70 80 I challenge any Muslim to name for me one which is called to be claimed to be a miracle and the challenge is very simple you choose the one you call miracle right now and if I could not get you busted I will not be I will not even go to the internet ever again. Who want to do it? It's a challenge. All those scientific miracles is a joke. It is the opposite. What miracles? From the first page in the Quran to the last page in the Quran is a stupid book. Full of fairy tale stories, stupidity and fictions. What miracle? My friend, when you when you start my video, always I play an intro video for my books. Go and get my books, and they are translated to many languages. You can get, and you can read, and you will laugh with me about what it's called miracle. Not a single miracle Muslim claim to be exist in the Quran is exist. They fabricate translation, they fabricate words, and they fabricate interpretation to make it fit with science. But I got them busted very easy. And here we go, I'm live. Who is the Muslim? He chose. You see, I'm not going to pick up what the topic. You tell me what miracle you want to talk about right now. Who want to do it? Who want to do it? Look at them. Here we go. I'm here almost every day and we have our skype open anyone can call me you can be whoever you want 
I don't care if you are a scholar or you are no one call me and let people judge see Muslims they debate only people who have no knowledge they go after a teenage who do not know two verses in the Bible to say to him this is how Jesus can be a God and he said only the father he know the our our friend Jesus he said clearly when the hour will come so what do you mean when Jesus he said no one but the father he's speaking about himself too because he said that me and the father is one but the, the time the judgment of the hour is going to be in heaven the one who saw me he saw the father the prophecy of Saudi Arabia were ruled by kings by the, my friend those countries always ruled by kings this is not a prophecy this is stupid isn't it Muhammad he went to the king of Najran what what prophecy this is prophecy let me make a prophecy for you tomorrow there is some women they will have their uh, period What were ruled by kings? All all this Middle East was ruled by kings. Isn't it the king, the queen of Sheba, very famous? Who are they? Al 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 as an example, an Arabian tribe who they have kings. Al Manadira in Iraq, Al Ghassasina. Aren't they Arab and they have kings? This is not a prophecy. But if you want me to show you prophecy, I am willing to go. I mean, if, if a Muslim want to call me right now and he want to name for me a prophecy, let's go in details. If there is any Muslim want to show me a prophecy, the prophet he said. Anyone? Choose anyone. I mean, the best you have, the most powerful one. Who want to do that? You see, I prefer that a Muslim he call me so you can hear two voices and two opinion, not one side of the story. But what I can do, look at them, they are scared. What prophecy? Let me show you a prophecy, Muhammad, he said. As an example. As an example. Hmm. <clears throat> prophecy <laughs> actually I asked Muslims how he how he was called the prophet I mean first of all if this is a prophecy how come the prophecy of Muhammad is in the hadith but not in the Quran do you ask yourself such a question shouldn't the prophecy because prophecy when when, when somebody prophesy he prophesy what he prophesy what God said to him correct is that is that correct Why those prophecy Muslims they speak of it's not exist in the Quran, but it is in a hadith. How come we cannot find them in the Quran? Prophecy is coming from God, it should be in the Quran. You will find the prophecy of the prophets in the Bible, in the Bible, not in a book in the side. Not in a magazine. When a prophet in the Bible he says something, he say a prophecy, he prophesy in the name of God. It is in the Bible, not. I mean, what the point of having it in the, out of out of the holy book? If it is holy, because a prophecy is a holy word of God. You see, a man he prophesy nothing. A man he prophesy in the name of God, which means what he is telling you is what God told him, which means the real prophet is God, not the prophet. You know what I mean?
Do we have any Muslim would like to call? Mayday, Mayday. Anyone? <clears throat> My throat is going dry. Anyone? Nobody? No? <clears throat> yeah. Well, Muhammad. <clears throat> He said things proving to us that he is a false prophet. And we can count endless false prophecy. I will show you one of them. Do you see this one? This one, Muhammad is speaking about Jesus. He claimed that between Jesus and him, which means by time, there's no messengers. But the stupid himself in the Quran, he said that Allah, he sent the three messengers and those are the messengers of Jesus. <laughs> Oh boy, how you say that three messengers, they are the apostle of Jesus, the disciple of Jesus were sent to people to preach the Injil. And then you say there is no messenger between me and Jesus. Any Muslim can explain? Anyone? If there is really anyone after Jesus between Muhammad and Jesus, Muslims, who are the three who Allah He sent? Who are they? Allah He sent three messengers. In chapter 36 verse number you know 12 11 10 14 it says that Allah he sent the three messengers and then if we go to see who are they those we will find that they are messengers of the Messiah hello hello <laughs> Hello, are you there? I'm not sure why you are calling me if you don't want to talk. <coughs> Do we have any Abdul? How you say there is no messengers between me and Jesus, and then we say that those are three messengers of Jesus, and how Jesus can be a messenger, yet he sent messengers. And they are messengers of God. A messenger cannot make me a messenger, for he himself is a messenger. Those are three men were sent by God, which is Jesus. According to the story in the Quran, those are three men, and according to the Muslim interpretation, that it was Paul and Peter and John. Any Muslim have a comment? <clears throat> Mm 
Can you Muslim have a comment? No comment. All Muslims agree. The same they agree that the Prophet, Allah, he installed wisdom in his balls. In the nerves. Wisdom in the nerve, in the vessel of the blood. Every vessel of a blood, Muhammad, he have wisdom in it because the angel, he stuffed his wisdom in his blood and you know blood goes to your balls to your you know anus the wisdom of Allah is there I mean how we must believe in this garbage and now I know why in in the West they say he have no balls to say so to do so and ah, they were talking about wisdom. I never thought about this before. Hmm? That's very smart. That's deep. That's deep down there. <laughs> and you are telling me that Islam is not teaching the truth. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? After they brought the gold tray contain a gold ball full of belief and wisdom was brought and Jibril stuffed his chest and throat. I mean, look, not the chest only, even to the throat, all the way. Wisdom have to go up. I mean, like you are stuffed and there is no more space. Like if you are driving between cities and you are you're going to go in the highway, so you keep pushing the 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 like when you are in the in the in the gas station, the gas enter like there's no more space. This is exactly what happened to Muhammad. He stuffed him all the way to his throat, all the way to his nose. The 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 enter like wisdom and and faith is coming from his nose. He's stuffed. There's no more space. Muhammad even cannot talk. He can't even uh, uh, he can't breathe. His throat is stuffed with wisdom. How you can do that? Stuffed his chest and throat blood vessels with it, and then he closed it. I'm so glad they closed it because imagine the prophet walking and he is leaking wisdom. I mean, for sure, if he did not close it, he will leak. By the way, I have to confess a secret. Uh, some of you says I am smart, but what you do not know. I was walking behind the prophet at that time and some wisdom leak because it was like you know a, a new surgery it's not closed yet so it like little bleeding huh and from that bleeding i got my wisdom and this is the true story i can prove it <laughs> oh boy <clears throat> but the prophet muhammad is the only prophet in the religion in the whole world who received his wisdom by stuff like zucchini. If you go in the Middle East, as an example, there's a guy, his name is the Christian Prince. You can go to his video and he said that his mother, she used to stuff zucchini with rice and beef. And this is exactly how the prophet beat upon him. Allah stuffed him like the zucchini. But instead of stuffing his throat with Rice, as the Christian Prince mother used to do to him because he's an idiot, he likes to eat a lot. He stuffed him with wisdom. Thank you very much. That's that's deep. That is serious. That is religion, and that is wisdom, and that is belief. And I cannot hold myself from converting to Islam. That's too much. <clears throat> I did not do Zach and Naik yet. I'm not doing Zach and Naik. If you want to do Zach and Naik, I have to do it a different way. <laughs> you must not believe in this. His throat, his abandonment, his belly, his stomach, his balls was stuffed with wisdom. I feel sorry for you, Muhammad. If Muhammad get injured, we can't give him blood. Because 
his blood is not a positive or all negative or so you know it's a wisdom positive I mean it's in front of you so this is science and you are telling me Allah is not God how he is not God he can yet he can stuff your throat with wisdom I'm so thankful that the Prophet did not throw up because if you throw up all the wisdom will come out and that is disgusting my friend this is amazing if you did not convert to Islam this is your chance convert to Islam you go to sleep you wake up in the morning you find that Allah he cut your chest all the way down to your testicles and Allah he installed a dish of wisdom and dish of faith faith what is making it more crazy that the the the, the bow is full of belief how you can put how you can put a belief in a dish Muslims who you speak about science how you explain to me that God he would believe in a dish 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 a dish it's a that's a dish that literally dish made of gold but we have to be honest here it's not a normal dish if you go to my poor kitchen you will find like normal dishes I mean like whatever but in the kitchen of Allah you have to make a note because those dishes is coming from where coming from heaven my friend and do you expect really that Allah will bring down with Jibreel sending him sending wisdom to the Prophet with normal dish like a, something you get like for two dollars from Walmart are you crazy or what it have to be an expensive gold it was a gold tray containing a gold bowl to gold it's not like gold and silver no 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 that train you train us how much this is surgery is important um uh, somebody speaking to me in uh, in Indonesian my friend I don't speak Indonesian I speak all languages in the world except the one you know I'm the same as the prophet I have knowledge about everything except the one you know <laughs> oh boy my friend God gave us a gift and that gift is called the brain don't live like an animal don't live like an animal life is a beautiful if you use your brain if you don't lose your brain you are just like like you are just an animal who like see he see the grass as food you know uh, once I was like you know sitting with friends and they said look how beautiful this bird you know how beautiful this bird but do you know that bird the beautiful bird you see is a monster for different creatures to explain to you imagine you are a butterfly and then you see a bird you will be terrified <laughs> because the bird will eat you so what what look for you cute or beautiful it might be the most ugly thing ever you can imagine for someone else is that correct imagine if the spider have a size of an elephant huh? the spider is so tiny we, we can smash it huh? and you are disgusted from it but imagine if the spider he is so big imagine if the bees are so big and you are so small so what you see in life is the bent in your position on life but in, not in reality the reality you witness is reality have to do with you only in your condition and your size and your location etc and the way you are made so we as a human we have conditions and we look at things around us in life based on these conditions which we have but then how a human being he strip himself from the cushion from the condition of being smart because god he made you smart really you are smarter than all the creation he have around him And then you strip yourself to believe in this.
You know what I mean? Somebody saying if this hadith is authentic, my friend, it is very much authentic to the point if you check the blood, you will see there. <laughs> this is very, very authentic, my friend. What are you talking about? This is really, really authentic. This is Zahir Bukhari. What is this hadith is authentic? <laughs> Do you see it? Sahih al Bukhari. So, my friend, don't strip yourself from the gift God He gave you. Use your brain. Don't be an insect. Because insects, they are programmed. Actually, even sometimes, you know, animals who they are animals, who they are programmed to do things and to live in certain way, they do better than a human being. Because a human being, sometimes he chooses to be stupid. The second you choose to be stupid, it is the same second you strip yourself from your right as a human. Because you as a human, you should be smart. How you believe in this garbage? How you believe that God, if you believe in him, there's a God. If you believe in him, he will he will make your penis endless and he will make you have a lot of women for sex. I mean, that do you really believe in such a thing to be exist? This is what God is about for you. This is a promise of God. Somebody is saying, I will study theology. My friend, before you study theology, I advise you to study logic. Because in order to learn theology, you have to learn how to be a logical person, a person who can connect the dots, a person who can read between the words, a person who can cut off letters and then put them together to make a sentence and the sentence would appear differently. The problem is that all this text is in front of us and the Muslim don't see that how stupid it is. Why? Because they decide not to read. They decide to memorize a story. Nobody is reading. And there's a huge difference between reading, you know, like your mind should be read, not, not just by moving your tongue or your lips. Your mind should be reading. Your mind should be analyze the information you receive. But people don't do that. Using mind sometimes is very heavy duty for some people. They choose not to use their mind because it's too much pressure. Too much. Just live, eat, drink, go to the bathroom, you know, make barbecue. And if you start thinking, then you will find yourself, you have a stress, right? So you, and you avoid thinking because thinking will bring some stress to you. You will see the world differently. You will not be a silly person. Because simply Muslims, they worship Muhammad. This is why they say Muhammad, P-P-B-U-H. How come we Christians, we believe that Jesus is God, but I never say Jesus peace upon him or Jesus Allah pray on him. Even the Muslim, they say the name of Allah without saying anything additional to it. But when they say the name of Muhammad, they don't they add tons of words after after that. Anyway, my friend, I wanted to share this with you today. I hope you guys you have a good uh, you have a good time with me. Uh, I will try tomorrow uh, to do live podcast around three thirty if I can. If not, then the day after maybe. So. I am very thankful for having all of you and I hope I did not hurt the feeling of anyone however if I hurt your feeling that's mean I'm doing good because the first sign that you make a human being think is hurting his feeling he will wake up a person who is taking drugs you cannot awake him from drugs by saying to him drugs is okay you have to hurt his feeling show him how stupid he is by taking drugs not because you hate him, but because you love him. You want to save him from drugs. 
if you care for a child you teach him what is right and what's wrong if you're a child he went to the neighbor and he brought some apples he stole if you say to him bring more you just created a thief if you say to him shame on you don't do that again you just created a good man don't be silly and don't be stupid take things very serious think about your child tomorrow he will grow and then he will become what you just told him to do it's okay to steal apples from the neighbors oh it's just an apple from a neighbor from a tree it's full of an apple what, what will what they will lose it is a theft you just created a thief the one who will steal an apple and get the blessing of his mother he will steal tomorrow something bigger we should speak for good for we are following the god of good we should practice good for good without him is useless from their fruits you shall know them so don't teach your son to steal apple as muhammad he taught his followers to attack the neighbors so they can get the blondy women he made the blondy women the apples to steal It's just they are just a fruit to enjoy. For Muhammad, he don't speak for God. Women are not apples to eat and to throw the seed. They are a human. Islam don't practice a humanity or any human belief. It's a very violent religion. Speaking about we shall be strong so we can defeat the weak we will be strong so we will be masters and they will be slaves we will be strong so we can rape their women and take their land that is not from god be good as your father the messiah he said to the jews if you are of your father abraham then how you don't do the work if your father be good as your father, my friend. A human being is a created with his conscious. He can judge. And he knew exactly what is wrong and what's right. Because God, he built inside you self-understanding. This is why when you, if you ever slaughter a chicken, it's just a chicken, not a human being, you will feel it's ugly. The blood is ugly. You will not like it but yet it's a chicken so how a human being enjoy slaughtering a human being and then he jump shouting Allahu Akbar how that can happen that because the devil he was able to control you and make you enjoy slaughtering a human being like you and then in order to make you believe that you are not the one who kill him so you don't feel guilty he told you oh it is not you who slaughtered them it was Allah as you remember in the Quran the Quran says that it's not you it's not you who killed them it was Allah it's not you who shoot at them it was Allah it's not you who slaughtered them it was Allah chapter 8 verse number 17 فَلَمْ تَقْتُلُوهُمْ you see this is a phrase always said by isis by al-qaeda by all the criminals in the world they repeat this phrase each time they are slaughtering somebody it is not you who slaughter who slew them do you see it it was allah and this is how the devil starts speaking to you he make you feel guilty free you are committing a crime but yet he's saying to you it's not you who killed them it's me it's not you who slaughtered them, it's me. It's not you who slit their, their throat, it's me. It's not you who, who, who shot, it's, it is me. That is the demonic God, the devil. No, my friend, it's you who slaughter, it's you who killed, it is you who will be standing in front of the Lord and you will pay for your crime. The devil is deceiving you, saying it's not you who killed, it's you who killed. Because ask yourself why the devil himself don't go and kill. If Allah is God, why he need you even to kill 
if he is the one who killed him why he need your hand to kill go kill him you are God why does God is so weak to the point he needs a guy he is five foot to go and go to jihad and die and slaughter himself and slaughter others why he don't do the job oh you did not kill them I killed them for he is the devil just to find what cannot be justified thank you guys for being here may the Lord bless you and I hope today we learn something good for good tomorrow and the good tomorrow is good because of the Lord his name is good he was always good and always he will be Christ is Lord Islam is false and see you soon again take care and good night good day everyone Bye-bye.